Why is the steel production, a sector that is considered to be particularly hard to abate when it comes to avoiding carbon dioxide emissions? The reason is that the way how we extract metals from their oxides, that is typically the mineral form in which we find them in their ores, proceeds through a series of heterogeneous redox steps. Chemical redox reactions are reactions in which we have a reduction taking place, namely of the oxide or sulfide into the pure metal, and an oxidation step takes also place in which the typically fossil reductant, like mostly carbon monoxide, is oxidized into carbon dioxide. And therefore, the main future scientific and engineering target for most metals in the periodic table is to remove carbon entirely and altogether from this type of redox reactions. This is shown here for the specific case of iron and steel production. The main mineral that we are using to extract iron from the ores is hematite, and that is Fe2O3. And as we have seen before in the generalized redox equation, that is exposed to carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide is produced typically in blast furnaces from exposing coke to very hot oxygen. And in this process, we are first producing carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide percolates upward in the blast furnaces to produce during the so-called Boudoir reaction, carbon monoxide and the carbon monoxide serves as the reductant. And that helps to extract the iron, but at the same time again, the carbon monoxide is oxidized into carbon dioxide. This also explains why the iron steel production is nowadays the biggest single contributor to the global carbon dioxide emissions. And it stands with that even before the production of plastics and petrochemicals, or aluminum, or even concrete. This enormous influence becomes visible when we take a look at the recent results of the so-called NASA Carbon Observatory. This is a coupled experimental and simulation endeavor, which has the aim to show and visualize the enormous carbon dioxide emissions around the globe. And again, the production of metals, particularly of the nearly 2 billion tons of steels every year, is the biggest single contributor to this scenario. When we sum up the total iron and steel production around the globe, this amounts to about 7 to 8 percent of all the total global carbon dioxide emissions. So we are really talking big numbers here. And this problem is not going away, because today we produce about 1.9 to 1.8 billion tons of steel every year, but the projection towards 2040 is much higher. There we talk about an annual production of about 2.5 billion tons of steel, which is a market demand that is driven by the many emerging countries which need to equip their population with housing, streets, infrastructures, and so on. And when we now take a quick look at the total global carbon dioxide emissions over time, then we realize that with this understanding that most of these emissions are coming from the metallurgical sector, we understand that finding solutions to remove carbon from that redox reduction that I've explained before becomes a very, very urgent and pressing research and engineering target. Now, which options exist to eliminate carbon from this complex redox system? One main option is to use hydrogen as a reductant instead of carbon, because the redox product would then be water instead of carbon dioxide. And we think here not only of using hydrogen in its pure form, but we also look into using different hydrogen-containing molecules that can have different advantages for the actual redox processes, for the kinetics, 
but also for the transport of these reductants around the globe. Because the problem with hydrogen is that it needs substantial cooling before you can transport it, and during this process it loses a lot of its energy. Another option is to bring the hydrogen in a so-called plasma form. A plasma is a state in which a gaseous molecular form is stripped of some of its electrons. That means it's a mixture of gas molecules and electrons and ionized gas species. And these can be in part very reactive and accelerate these redox equations that I have explained to you before. Another option still is to use the electrons directly, such as for instance done in electrolysis. This is shown here for the case where we replace carbon monoxide by pure hydrogen as adequate temperature and pressure. And that means that instead of carbon dioxide, we are producing pure water such as shown in this variant of this redox equation. This example shows the use of a carrier molecule or a hydrogen vector, as it's often also called, namely ammonia. Ammonia consists, as you see here, of one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. And when you use it at adequate temperature and pressure in a reactor and expose metal oxide to it, for instance hematite, then the hydrogen atoms are split off from the ammonia and an autocatalytic reaction takes place in which these hydrogen atoms are then used to reduce the metal oxides again to metal. That means you can also produce metals by using ammonia instead of pure hydrogen as a reductant. The detailed associated processes are of course a bit more complicated and there are separate movies about this process, but this shows in principle the opportunity to replace pure hydrogen also by different types of hydrogen vectors. With that I thank you very much for bearing with me and please stay tuned for another episode of Sustainable Metallurgy.